And we are so happy to have you. We're excited about today's topic. Ashley and I are joined with some incredible people. We have Nikki Lerner here. We have my brother-in-law, Pastor James Lowe. And we have, you guys already know her, Debbie, <laughs> my baby sister, Debbie Lowe. Yes. Everybody say Debbie Winers. No, she's Debbie, Debbie Lowe. Lowe. Yes. She's, she belongs to him. Belongs to that guy. Anyway, belongs anyway, we'll get to that. To <laughs> yes. The topic today is unity. And yes, they've been married for how long? Going on 27 years. Yes. So even though I'm sitting between them, we're they're strong. strong. They're, they're strong they're enough doing great. for me to sit we between them. Okay. This. Yes. But anyway, the topic today is unity. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be life-changing. It is so critical of a topic mm -hmm. And we're excited about covering it today. So tell your friends and family to tune in because it's going to be incredible. All right, I want to start off with the scripture. And I normally read it from my phone, but my brother James has a you. Very Bible, Bible with the largest print I think I've seen yes. in a long time. Yes. So anyway, my scripture, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For just as the body is one, and has many members. Mm -hmm. And all the members of the body, though many, are one body. Yeah. So it is with Christ. Glory to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Nikki, for coming. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nikki, you're a cultural coach. Yes. Okay, explain Cultural to me. Coach. I'm glad you asked. Yes. <laughs> what yeah, does usually, that mean usually exactly? Usually I pick that because nobody ever goes, oh, got it. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to explain it. So now you're in. So I'm a culture coach. And what I do is uh, most of my work these days is I help uh, organizations. I work with presidents and CEOs of companies and organizations, senior pastors, elder boards, uh, to move from historically monocultural mm -hmm. to healthy multicultural. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that is from my own uh, come from. I was in pastoral ministry for over 20 years wow. uh, at my diverse church okay. um, in the, the D.C. area where there was 52 different nations represented. Wow. Wow. Uh, and we learned a lot. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, just in the last, say, four years, mm -hmm. gone out on my own. And mm -hmm. uh, that's how I'm working with now. And I love what I do. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Yeah. Again, we're so glad that you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Pastor James Lowe, brother-in-law, tell us about yourself. <laughs> First of all, is it time for me to sing my song? No. <laughs> okay. No. Just, not this I, time. Babe, I told you. She, 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 she can sing, but Thank this you. is not a no. music show. Not, not, no. not right now. You don't sing? <laughs> Man, that's... Wow. <laughs> Okay. It, tell, tell the audience who you are and what you, what you do. Okay. First of all, thank you for having me on Generations. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm the senior pastor of a church uh, called Bethel World Outreach Church mm -hmm. um, that also boasts over 60 different nations. And, and we sing in different languages and different things like mm -hmm. that. But um, And God has uh, allowed me to be a part of birthing a movement called... Uh, uh, no, not every unite. nation. You, unite. <laughs> I started with Unite Nashville. Okay. I, I, I couldn't just, remember my uh, own, 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 own organization. Mm -hmm. But that, thank you, like actually. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, when, when, when George Floyd was killed, I don't think anybody knew what to do. And <laughs> my, little, yeah. my little teenager boy just came to me distraught, homeschooled, looking at everything on TV, and he asked me what I was going to do. Mm. And I didn't really have answers. Mm -hmm. And I... Yeah. And, um, I pulled out this Bible and, um, and uh, randomly went to Habakkuk uh, 1, and, which really was talking about the challenges that were going on in the nation and how God wasn't doing anything, and it led us to pray. And I said, son, I'm just going to pray, and got up and mm. went downtown and started praying and mm -hmm. seeing officials and officers and citizens beginning to be reconciled with one another. And that just turned into a movement that has lasted a couple of years. And so mm -hmm. that's what I'm emphasizing right now in my life. And it's called what again? Unite Nashville and Unite Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the goal? 
The goal is to, uh, is to give a, a practical expression to the ministry of reconciliation, which we are responsible for. 2 Corinthians um, 5, 17 says that we who are reconciled have been given the ministry of reconciliation, and we have the word in, of reconciliation, and therefore we are Christ's ambassadors, as if he was making his appeal through us. So that's what we want to put in action and give practical legs to a profoundly important scripture in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So honored to have you here, brother-in-law. Oh, yes. You did good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, I'm glad to have you back. Yes, it's good to be here. How important do you think this topic is, what we're discussing today? Um, well, first of all, we've had the privilege to be able to lead a church of multi-ethnic um, and that's been amazing because as much as we've been out, you know, we've been traveling and, traveling and singing forever, being able to sing to all types of people, but we were pretty much raised in mm -hmm. African-American church. But coming here and being a part of the church that my husband and I lead, uh, that was important to be able to make that shift mm -hmm. because it's not just you and it's not just the way you do it. And so you had to make sure you took the scriptures for what it was and learn to love and embrace other people's uh, way of doing. And, and so I think it's important because it's more than tolerating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond tolerating. Yes. Celebrating. You yes. have to go into first embracing and yes. then celebrating. Yes. So it's literally embracing someone else's way of doing it. That's right. Being interested. Powerful. That's right. And so uh, I think it's important. We don't do that enough. We've gotten into a very selfish mm -hmm. time in society. Yeah that uh, this is something we need to continue to push and remind people to do. Be mm. intentional about unifying, being interested in someone other than yourself. Okay, That's great. awesome. Yeah. Ashley, um, where yes. do you think your generation is in this area of unity and cultural differences? And mm, that's tough. I think mm. in some ways we're further along than the generations before us. But we're also in this weird, almost hypersensitive uh, time mm. <laughs> where I think people are afraid to say the wrong thing because they don't want to get canceled. Um, and mm. so, yeah, it's, it's weird. I almost in some ways feel like we're moving forward, but then I sometimes feel like we're setting back. But I do, I do want this conversation to happen and to continue to happen because people just need to learn um, before yeah. we started filming, we were talking about that there's a difference between true racism and just ignorance. And you, the only way to remedy ignorance is to have conversations and for people to be able Educated. to be free yeah. to ask questions to really get an understanding mm -hmm. without people getting defensive or feeling, you know, mm -hmm. weird. So I don't know. I, I think there's still a lot of work to be done, it is obviously. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm very I'm very hopeful, and I'm glad we're having this conversation mm -hmm. in this right. episode. So, and, and because of this this topic being very broad mm -hmm. in in a lot of ways, I want to try to narrow it by by maybe focusing on first of all the church, mm -hmm. because I really believe as the church. No, we, we should lead, lead the way. The way. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Because um, that is the heart of God mm -hmm. for us to be one. That's what he created the church to be. Okay, yes. so, so focus on the church, but I want to focus, narrow down even more, and kind of focus it on the church, those of us in the church who really recognize there's a problem and really want to see it fixed want to see it mm -hmm. gone, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I, I do believe on both sides, and I shouldn't say both because it's more than two sides. Yeah. When mm -hmm. we talk about unity, everybody, mm -hmm. a lot of times we Absolutely. focus just on black and white yeah. right? Um, because of the issues that we've had in this country. Yes. But when we talk about the church, what would you say to someone, I'll go to Nikki first and then come to Pastor James, who really want to be a part of the solution. Yeah. Because I've had people uh, say, you know, I want to help, what do I say? They're afraid yeah. to ask, they're afraid to say. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who wants to be a part of the solution? Yeah, I love that question so much because 
here's the great thing about being in Christ, mm -hmm. is that whenever we want to move towards uh, better unity in our communities, better unity in the Big C Church, mm -hmm. is we always know that Jesus is saying yes. Right. I mean, if you think about you know, it, that's will. one thing yeah. that you don't have to sit around and wonder. Is it his will? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Jesus, do you right. want us to be more diverse? Do you want us to make as <laughs> much <laughs> room as possible for as many different? You know, he's not going to say no. Right. And in fact, it's all. It's it, first of all, it's all over Scripture. Right. That he's already said yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to fast about that. Thank God. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so eat, eat the oh cheeseburger. <laughs> right. One less yeah. Fasting. Eat the yeah. cheeseburger. Yeah. Eat the cheeseburger. <laughs> right. We don't have to fast. Right. <laughs> Jesus talks about it when he's in the garden in mm -hmm. in John chapter 17. Right. Mm -hmm. When he prays for the disciples, he prays for him himself, and then he prays mm -hmm. for those of us that will be his disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. And what he prays for is that they would be one mm -hmm. like just like he as we are he is one. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, I, if scripture good. doesn't still blow our minds right. after we walk yeah. with him, <laughs> right. that's craziness to me. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So Jesus, the, the unity that he experienced with God his Father, mm -hmm. he wants us to be that, that close. That, close. Yeah. Yeah. that still blows mm -hmm. my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So G it's part of Jesus' heart. But mm -hmm. here's the other thing that we can know as, as believers, is that our only model of that visual worship in the New Testament mm -hmm. is found in Revelation 7. Now, what does Revelation 7 say? Now, in Revelation 7, that's where uh, John has his vision. Mm -hmm. And he says, behold, and you all remember this, right? Behold, I looked, and I saw a great crowd of people. Right. And they were from every tribe and yeah, every nation, right. every, right. every language, right? Mm -hmm. And they were saying, salvation comes from our God. Yeah. Right. Not the black people's God, yes. not exactly. the Chinese people's God. <laughs> exactly. And here's the other thing that he saw. He saw God's people in all their diversity, all mm -hmm. their beauty, worshiping together, not separately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if that is our model of worship, mm -hmm. what John didn't see was, you know, hey, I saw a vision and, and the white people started their church at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. worshiping the, mm -hmm. the lamb mm -hmm. and ended at 1050. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, you know, the black people started their, their service and they started at 11, 11 a.m. and ended at 6 p.m., you know, with no break. And then the Latin people started their church in the basement of heaven. He did. I mean, that's not what he saw. He saw all of God's people coming together. And the thing that unified them was mm -hmm. who the Lamb was, right. yes. who Jesus was. Right. And so I say all that to say, people who are solution-oriented, mm -hmm. where they can begin is, this is actually God's idea mm -hmm. and God's mm -hmm. heart. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even if it mm -hmm. wasn't, it'd still be a good idea. Right. But it's God's it's idea. It's actually God's idea. And that's a place where we can start, and we can always start with God's idea, and then how do we live that out in the fruits of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Spirit. God's mm -hmm. idea. And how to live it, it out um, in the fruits, in the fruits of, the of the Spirit. Never yes. go wrong with the fruits of the Spirit. Never right. go wrong. Right. Ooh, that's so that's deep. Good. Very good. Because we, James, let me let you comment on that first because there's so many other things coming through my mind. Well, <laughs> so, so many things coming to my mind from what you said, but just going quickly back to John 17, he, he not only wants us to have the same relationship that he has with his Father, he says that they, speaking of the world, will know that you sent me and I love them. That's right. Mm. So the when we are functioning together as a body of believers, yeah. that's how they actually see Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yes. And they that's know it. that Jesus loves them. That's so, the picture. So when we as believers forget our responsibility to be ambassadors and representatives of Christ mm -hmm. and to be ministers of reconciliation, mm -hmm. it becomes easy for us to have the distance. Mm -hmm. If the only people in your life are, if you have a mono-ethnic life, you know, and you don't have ethnic diversity in your life, you actually have to tell yourself, I'm not living out the, the fullness of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I need to, and I need to bring that, invite that part of um, the gospel in. That's why I like uh, ethnically blended um, relationships. I think that, yeah. that I think that in generations before yeah. it, it had stigmatism, but I think now it's a double preaching of the gospel, mm -hmm. yes. you know, as and, and mm. as ambassadors to Christ. Let me give you a, a scripture to just really is germane to some of the things you were saying. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Acts seventeen verse twenty six? Mm -hmm. I think this is powerful 
It says, and he made from one man every nation of mankind mm -hmm. uh, to live on, on the face of the earth. And that word nation means ethnos mm -hmm. or ethnicity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to live on the face of the earth, having determined their allotted periods and their boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, yet he is actually not far from each one of them. In, in other words, our diversity, our ethnic diversity is intentionally given to us from God, right. not to divide us from right. one another. Mm -hmm. And he says, but he said, when you see these boundaries, when you see these distinctions, he said, you're going to have to seek me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's in Christ. Wow. Yeah. That you that Christ. you that you find, and so if I could give one more mm -hmm. point to this, and and I and I this is not meant to, what I'm about to say is not meant to drop a bomb, and is not meant to ask someone not to use the terminology that I'm going to come at just for a little bit. It's just like when we say here the scripture says He's made us ethnicities, right? And but yet we digress to using. Uh, uh, terminology that brings division, white mm -hmm. people, black people. We have em embraced this terminology that was in in initially introduced to separate right. and to segregate. Yeah. It has no biblical context. Right. And so, if, if, and, and so, again, I think that it's so ingrained in the culture, the word racism, but it's only one race. Mm -hmm. It's a human race, so that's, that's already right. a, a, a myth. So the, yeah. the problem is, is that we keep using terminology that doesn't allow us to identify the real problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, not that I think that's solved uh, mm -hmm. in a quick moment, but no. we have to start acknowledging gotta it. Gotta start somewhere. Yeah. So that we can actually have true reconciliation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. there's only one human race. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. One race. I'm so race. so clearly, as the church, we're taking on the world. The world. Mm -hmm. It has shaped our culture. Now, and we've, yeah. allowed, yeah. we've allowed the world to shape mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why Language you can't find peace. If yeah. he's the prince of peace, you can't find, he said, he said, I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. If, if, if the word represents the mind and the will and, uh, of, of Christ and we begin to embrace something different, you can't have peace. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. There's also a, a term sure. that I use with people I work with or phrase mm -hmm. that's helpful sometimes. And that is, I love the word culture. Because mm -hmm. I think the word culture is really expansive. Mm -hmm. I always it say is. culture as it relates to ethnicity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or culture as it relates to gender yeah. or whatever yeah. it is that you're talking about, yeah. right? Because then you can get away from the term race. Mm -hmm. Because usually, yes. particularly in, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a church I work with once and they said, we're going to do a, 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 a series called Race and the Gospel. Wow. And I said, well, what you just done is to say that series, what it's really called is black people yes. and the gospel. So we've yeah. already separated <laughs> that there's the gospel yeah. right. and then there's racial people, right? Yeah. Or then there's black people. So now we, we've already started separate. to separate it. Mm -hmm. Where if we say, no, we talk about culture as it relates to our ethnic come mm -hmm. from, because mm -hmm. that is real. That's, that's what we real. deal in. Yeah. 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 It helps us to have a better conversation. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. And you say, how do you move forward? And first of all, I, I will agree. Your generation is much freer, mm -hmm. you know, and and I really, I love that about them. They, they are mm -hmm. fearless. They they, you know, decide, mm -hmm. this is my friend. They stand by it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they really are bold. But yeah. society has tried to even muffle that yeah. because mm -hmm. make you fear for what you say or watch what you yeah. say. And now your boldness is being, you know, kind of yeah. stamped. But I remember back in the day, um, as we continued to develop our church, it was really, you asked, how do you do it? You do it just by being real. Um, you cannot have a diverse family and not let it feel like family. Mm -hmm. So in that, you got to realize that there will be failures. Someone will make a mistake. Yeah. Someone will say something incorrectly. But if you know that this is what you were called to, um, you're prepared for it. So I remember one young lady was uh, assisting a pastor that was uh, their uh, uh, admin. And uh, it was an African-American pastor, and it was an African-American. His wife, of course, was, um, well, not of course, but his wife was African-American. Mm -hmm. And she was not. She was a Caucasian woman, wonderful woman, very kind. So she came up to my house one day, yeah. and she said, Debbie, I just want to talk to you. So we sat on my front porch, <laughs> and she said, uh, I can be real with you, can't you? Can I? I uh -oh. said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> now, man, you better be ready. Answer, right. you better be right. ready. Right. Let them be ready. Answer honestly. <laughs> yes. And so she just went on to say, you know, in her culture, as when she takes a job, her job is whoever her boss is. Mm -hmm. And her boss was that particular pastor, an African-American pastor. So uh, her thought was, he's my only concern. Nothing matters, right? Uh, other than that. So, <laughs> well, the wife was asking her to do something. And she was like, you're not my job. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And oh, okay. so the uh -huh. African-American wife let her know, no. Uh, <laughs> we <laughs> you are assisting him. You assist you him. assisting me. Mm. And she was like, no, is that? I said, listen, now, listen, now. Let That's me tell you. That's written in between the lines. Yes. <laughs> just roll with her. You know? I was just giving her the, uh, you know, hey, as an African-American, we pretty much are like, we do everything together. So yeah. if mm -hmm. you talk about him, you talk about them. You know, you talk right. about the whole family, the kids. But it was good that she was able to ask, now, what do I do? do I, how do I... Handle her. This. How do I, do I ignore? No, you don't ignore her. No, you don't want to ignore her. You want to be there tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I told her, yeah. thank you yeah. for coming over. You That's can good. always ask me. Yeah. yeah. Ask me. Technically, you want to know how do I deal with this black woman, this yeah. African American woman, mm -hmm. and it's fair. If you want to know, let's right, talk about it. Right. And so then I was able to share with her, I understand your stance, but remember that we think like this, or and I get what you're mm -hmm. saying, how about do it this way? Right. And so the conversation, how you move forward is just being truthful. Ask the question. Yeah. Receive the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have the dialogue. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you were open for her be to do that. It has to be a safe place. Say, you right. have to Absolutely. be open to be a safe place. But yeah. that's how we're gonna move forward, period, in life. Right. We're not going to make it if we only live in assumptions mm -hmm. yeah. and perceptions. We have to get to truths, so. which is simply just asking somebody. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. so mm. okay. Nikki says something earlier about revelations and how John saw the 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 church, mm -hmm. which included everybody. Okay, I grew up in African American church, mm -hmm. a black church. Um, does that make my church racist or against diversity? Mm. Well, that's a loaded question the way you just asked that. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, because, because you're right. I grew up, my parents yes. never taught me mm. anything else but to love everybody. Right. And because, like Debbie said, our career mm. took us out of an all black world. That's right. Yeah. And, and kind expanded of launched us yeah. out there expanded and expanded us. I went yes. from all black audience saying, you better sing, girl. You better yeah, sing that song. Yeah, yeah. Other, other, all white audience. Till they, they were just like, sit like there. I looked at Listen. Bibi and I was like, Ooh, I was like, they don't you're like doing us good. at all. Just right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing good. But yeah. found out later they were crying they were and weeping yeah. and we enjoyed you. But I, <laughs> God knew where he was. He was taking us. Yeah. And so I can't look. I can't look at all white churches, all black churches, all no. Asian churches, all, and say they're racist. That's or right. Or they don't want to embrace. The right. kingdom way That's because right. we all are a part of our heritage and exactly. where we're born into, right? Well, and there's so a kind there's of speak a, to that. So there's a, a distinction between a church being a racist church, mm -hmm. and there are some. Mm -hmm. yes. I've met them. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Being a racist church, mm -hmm. and another uh, line of types of churches, which we might call ethnic churches or mm -hmm. ethnic-centered churches, yeah. mm -hmm. that came out of the, uh, the, necess the necessity to meet a need. Right. right. Yes. Now, most that, of our, most of our ethnic churches that happen, mm -hmm. they, they the exist need. that way because right. they meet yeah. a need yeah. because yeah. of yeah. the context yeah. of how mm -hmm. our country in particular, but other countries as well, mm -hmm. have come to be up until this point. True. So it's really important to make a distinction yeah. between the meeting the need of the ethnos, mm -hmm. right, depending okay. on that context, mm -hmm. and ra a racist church. Now, What's some of the essences of racism, right? Racism is any time that you are looking at a person solely based on their color, yeah. right? mm -hmm. their come from, and you're trying to keep them out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Or keep them out or keep them down or the negative side of oppression. Mm -hmm. Those things are racism. racism. Exactly. Sometimes when we, we do intentional diversity, mm -hmm. some people have a, 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 a fear. I don't know if you, you all have experienced this of like, 
but if we go look for people, isn't that racism? Is that wrong? No, no, it's, not. Yeah. No, it's actually, yeah, it's mm -hmm. actually exactly what Paul said mm -hmm. about consideration and going after people, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's a positive expression, mm -hmm. not a negative one. Mm -hmm. But good. a racist church would say, and these do exist, um, mm -hmm. would say, we don't want these people here mm -hmm. right, at all mm -hmm. because they are Chinese, Vietnamese, yeah. black, white, whatever it is. And right. any population can be that. A black church could certainly be a Absolutely. racist church and yeah. say, right. exactly. we don't want anybody with black people here. Right. Right. Yeah. And literally say, mm. you have to stay out. That's racism. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, go. for me, uh, my own opinion about this is I believe that God has given all of us as leaders, church leaders, a call yeah. to be diverse. I yes. believe that is at the really? center. Yes. Mm. I believe that is at the center of God's heart. I do. Mm. Um, I, I don't believe, even though we're in the context of how our country came to be, mm -hmm. I still believe that God's call for us is to be with each other. And is, yeah. to, is to be in diverse environment and relationship. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Mm -hmm. um, and what I get excited about is that now, you know, in the, the time we're taping this show, if you think about it, there are no boundaries for any of us as leaders yeah. to develop multicultural communities. Mm -hmm. None. Sure. Like not, not even the, you know, usually the white male pastor who says, certainly we shouldn't be diverse. We're in the middle of a cornfield in right. Idaho, right. you know. Yeah. No, you too, because technology exists. <laughs> yeah. That's right. right? And That's you know, right. you could call up Debbie and she could come preach at your church right. virtually. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. you know her. Yeah. Like, right. really there's sure. there's no literally excuse. nothing, nothing that keeps us, us mm -hmm. from wow. the vision that God has asked us to do. Wow. And so again, I think it's very, very important for us to make that distinction between what are we talking about? We're talking about an ethnic church, you know, mm. a Korean American church that meets a need that's language based right. for people that yes. are immigrating. Mm. Was well, that a racist church? No, no. Yeah, no, it's meeting a need. Absolutely, as opposed to a church that is trying to keep people that are not like them. Exactly. Out. So mm -hmm. good, so good. So it's oh. almost like for us, Cece, it was community-based as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with, if you open a church for the need of this community, and that community may be majority African-American or whatever, that still just meets the need. It doesn't classify as races. Yes. Because at that point, anyone who lived in the community was welcome. That's right. To come and attend. To come. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how important, first of all, do you agree with her on us all being called. She's to, a coach. She's a coach. You gotta agree. <laughs> you don't disagree with you the coach. You will not argue with the coach. I love this agreement. She's great. This robust she's conversation. Because, because yeah. going mm -hmm. to your ministry of, of uh, Unite, mm -hmm. Unite right? Nashville, Unite mm -hmm. Nashville, you, you understood that it was a need to, to well, first of all, you guys' church is diverse, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's called Every Nation. It better yeah, be diverse. Yeah, it better right. be diverse. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you, even beyond that, you felt a need to be intentional about this expression. Yes, because uh, so th there's an icon of our church. It's of, of a South African, um, two South African hands of different hues put mm. together uh, in prayer when apartheid fell this became the representation of our church because people become what they behold. Yes. And so they have to see it. This, this, principle, so this principle is played out, I believe, with Jacob in the Bible when um, he, uh, God gives him the wisdom uh, of what to do to make the sheep come out speckled and spotted mm -hmm. yeah, versus the good, solid Jack. color. He took a branch and he was to, to peel it down so you could Meditate. see the light yeah. side and the dark side. And whenever they were mating or feeding mm -hmm. at the most intimate moments of their life, when that was before them or that was in the water, they became spotted and they became prosperous. So we see that this type of, of, of diverse, ethnic diversity mm -hmm. is intentionally formed. You, I love mm -hmm. how you said, it's not a sin, it's not this weird thing to go out there where it's wrong for me to go after you. God <laughs> to actually commands us to be a friend to the foreigner. Yes. And so mm -hmm. when, he, and when he says, um, uh, lo, I come in the volume of the book is written to me, he said he came uh, to not just destroy the wor works of the devil, but to save the world, mm -hmm. the world being all ethnicity. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has already modeled this for us. And, and here's the unique thing, but not that I have the right to 
to uh, transition us into anything like with cancel culture and stuff like this. But if it was somebody in the Bible that would have been canceled, I thought Peter would be the guy. <laughs> that, you know, let's cancel yeah. him. Yeah. It's a yeah. few of them. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he... Mm-hmm. Because he basically mm-hmm. had uh, what we would call in modern day vernacular racist tendencies. Yeah. He he That's was true. he was discriminatory, mm-hmm. but but God gave him the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think something's happened in culture yeah, where good, where while good. people are on their own individual journey, journey with, journey. with God good. to work with them, time. we very we good. take the position we, of yeah. God that oh no you out yeah, you're you out, out. <laughs> and then you have that right. Yeah. God can determine who's in and he can mm-hmm. determine who's out. And he brought Peter along and showed him. There he you said, go. you don't call something unclean that right. I call clean. Yep, yep. I want you to be. And Peter, I feel like throughout the scripture, he's kind of struggled in and out with this yes. mm-hmm. his whole life. But is he critical to my faith? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is he critical to the yes. movement of the body? Yes. 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 So, so, so it's not, it's not mm-hmm. like, well, look at those people. It's our time now. It's just kind of like, <laughs> God, in Christ, we can fix it. And the yeah. moment that we don't live for him every day, or yeah, with them every day, yeah. you don't have a chance. Yeah. No, right. uh, that's which, so good. So good. So mm-hmm. good. So mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Which, which really brings me back to the only way we're going to bring the real solution is it's got to be in the it's word. Got it's got to be through the word of God. Mm-hmm. We we cannot do this cannot. in our own. It's just not because it's not <laughs> it's because we're just has to die. Right. Dickies. This is a spiritual warfare, yes. and I don't think a lot of us. Even those of us who feel like, you know, what the white world has done to the black world mm-hmm. and all of that, we, we all have to understand that we're dealing with spirits mm-hmm. and not people. And exactly. when we try to handle a spiritual problem Naturally. in our flesh, mm-hmm. in the natural, it doesn't work. it's not going to work. That's right. 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 Yeah. And there's a lot of great things we can do, but we, as the church, we have to be spirit-led mm-hmm. and we have to do things according to the Word of God in the right spirit with the right heart and understanding the overall goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Because mm. as soon as we take on the title as Christians or Christ followers, we already are in agreement with the scripture that you read, the unity that's in the diversity in the body of Christ. Right. Um, we are already uh, in, a, in agreement with that. And I forgot what I was going to say next, but it was <laughs> but profound okay. inside. It's, it's, it's going to come, come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. Anyway. All right. All right. Well, he <laughs> think about gets that, that profound yes. thing back. back. That's called. It, 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 it came back. I got it. It came back. But we're just going to let you throw us to break. break oh, okay. Now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Everybody, it's Ashley. We're here at my parents' house, and as you can see, um, it's the holiday season. Came a little early this year. My mom is working on a project with Balsam Hill, and they did an amazing job. The decorations look awesome, and seeing all the Christmas decorations really does remind me of traditions and holiday traditions and family traditions. And I think traditions are super important because I think they create memories. Um, that last a lifetime and it's something that you can pass on from generation to generation and I think it just creates a consistency within a family culture. So I think traditions are powerful and um, I hope that tradition continues. I think sometimes people like to steer clear from traditions, um, maybe because they feel like it's making things too rigid, but I think tradition is meant to make things exciting, and I think traditions can leave a really lasting impact in a family. Now that I'm a mom, I definitely am starting to think, what do I want our family unit traditions to be for the holidays? Um, Or just traditions in general, like around the dinner table, this is what we do at dinner time. Um, I definitely want to start establishing things that I can really instill in my kids and hopefully they'll want to continue it and do it for their kids. Um, So yeah, I think that tradition is really powerful and I'm excited to continue traditions that have been passed on from my family, but also to start new traditions. So I hope you guys are enjoying the show and I'll see you soon. Welcome back. Welcome back to Generations. Um, We could go on and on. Um, on this topic, but I'm so excited what we've already covered. But before we go further, uh, 
Pastor James, you had a thought before we went to the break. What was that? I was thinking just staying in that theme of the uni unity that's in diversity in the scripture that you just read. So what's attacking our, our unity? Mm -hmm. If Christ wants us to have unity, mm -hmm. then there is an accuser of the brethren that showed up at the very beginning of Genesis that was bringing division between people. Mm -hmm. And we have to begin to identify the things in our environment that divide us from Christ mm -hmm. and his perspective and what he wants. Just like it's, it's become more popular to say, I'm Democrat mm -hmm. or I'm Republican, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm liberal, I'm conservative. Hey, look, there's saved liberal people and there's saved conservative yes, people. Is. There's mm -hmm. some lost liberals and there's mm -hmm. some lost conservatives. Mm -hmm. yes, and, and, and I think that, uh, let's just talk about conservatism for a minute. Mm -hmm. I think that historically that has been the religious right. And, and the, thing, the thought is that, that everything there is, is right. But there is a difference between a Christ-centered righteousness and a, a religious rightness. The Pharisees had a religious right. right. In other words, yeah. every one of us would be like, we want to live like the Pharisees. They was, they was the best at living holy. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But they rejected Christ. Right. So when you wow. actually try to be right, Without Christ, Christ. it yeah. feel right. Yeah. It sound right. Yeah. And then, and another the saying, we have the we have the Bible says that no man judge you. We got liberty in Christ. It's like he say, you do whatever you 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 want <laughs> want to do, and you know it's just. But but then he he's against lasciviousness. He's mm -hmm. against yes. immorality, and so there people can go. take that to illogical extreme. Yes, but can. you can only understand it in, in Christ. Christ. In That's Christ. the balance. That's and the so key. what I am begging us to do is I'm not afraid of cancel culture or all that. I want Christians yeah. mm -hmm. to stand up and be Christians. Christians. I want Christ followers yes. to be Christ followers. And the most That's disappointing it. thing over the last couple of years we yeah. had yeah. is that the Christian voice has mm. been lost or nullified or not yeah. engaged in culture. And I am begging us mm. as we turn to solutions to start standing up and being bold in your faith. And I see, mm. see I still gotta stop and thank you yeah. for being a representation of boldness for Christ yeah. mm -hmm. and not being afraid to say what holiness is. Right. Well, you are accepted on the left, you're accepted on the on the on the right because mm -hmm. of being in Christ. Right. Thank right. you for right. doing that. Yes. 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 Yeah. God. And he said it is by this all men will know you are my disciples. That's it. That's right. Mm -hmm. so that you have love for one That's another. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That is how. That yeah. is in Christ, you will be known that you are his disciple. Yes. By the way, you love him. Yes. That is how, yeah. and that is also why when he says there's an enemy, mm -hmm. the enemy understands that when we come together, mm -hmm. that's when the world is going to know who Jesus right. is. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's time for You're all right. of us to just humble ourselves yeah. and become, Absolutely. like that's you right. said, get in Christ mm -hmm. and let's do it the right way. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. Uh, man, this is so I good. Know. Thank you, you Jesus. Keep going. You keep okay, going. okay. So, so. As we go to, towards the end of the show, I, I wanted to talk about two different things. Um, what about those of us who Ashley was saying earlier, you know, was born into black family, white family, whatever family you're in, went to an all black church, all black school. I remember, and we, we pastor a church that's very diverse. My son is the lead pastor, but Nashville Life Church as well. And um, I remember, when, when every you know the whole world was was looking at what happened to, yeah. to George to Floyd. George Floyd, mm -hmm. and um, one of the young white girls in my church, I mean, was just torn up, mm. yeah. and she just began to weep. She said, "I'm just so sorry." She said, mm. "I just didn't know." She mm -hmm. said, "I didn't even know mm. racism was still a thing. Wow. I just thought it was mm -hmm. gone. I thought it was way back when." Now this mm -hmm. young lady is probably a little bit younger than you, mm -hmm. early, thir early 30s, yeah. mm -hmm. um, if, if 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but her, she went on to explain, I was born in a white family. I went to white schools. I went, mm -hmm. That's all I know. And really her coming to our church was mm -hmm. really her first experience of, of being in a diverse mm -hmm. group of people, mm -hmm. a diverse setting. And so it was so beautiful. And what she did before I even told her anything, she went and got Coretta Scott King's book. Mm -hmm. okay. And she started just, just educating edu herself, yeah, trying, yeah, trying to, and, trying. and I just commended her. I was like, man, yeah. I am so proud of you. Yeah. I am so proud of you. But she really didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
And I think that's what do you do? What issue? What'd you say, Ashley? I said I think that's you, most of the time what we're dealing with is a not knowing, mm-hmm. lack of understanding yes. mm-hmm. because there's been a lack of exposure. That's right. And we're all products of our environment. So I've I've engaged in conversations um, with white and black people. And I've always been able to be a bridge because of my upbringing, right. because I was always around both. Like mm-hmm. our church was predominantly black, but I mostly went to school with white kids. Our neighborhood yeah. was mostly white kids. So I always had exposure to both. So yeah. I never, it was easy for me to just see people as people and not be like, oh, that white guy or that black girl. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, we're all just people. So, but I know for people who don't, uh, perceive the world in that way because they had a very mono, what's mm-hmm. the word? Mono-cultural. Monocultural, monocultural mm-hmm. world. Yeah. So I think part of it is just us being understanding of we only know what we've experienced and there has to be grace. And I think having those conversations, sometimes people already have those walls up because, but you have to understand, well, that was their experience. Like I, I, I remember me and Alvin would get frustrated even with my dad. Mm. Because he would say certain things, but I'm like, Alvin, you have to think about, like, dad's older. He yeah. grew up in a time mm-hmm. where this is how the That's world right. worked. So That's right. we have to be gracious even yeah. seeing this is how he sees the world because mm-hmm. that's been his experience. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of the times we're very quick to want to put labels on people and things like that. But we do just have to, kind of like you did with the lady who came over, you have to be open mm-hmm. to have those conversations without being quick to judge. And, and like you said, being in Christ— We have to be really quick to forgive. We have to be really quick to humble ourselves and see our own faults. Let me take the plank out of my eye before trying to take the speck out of that person's eye. And that's where the enemy, I think, has come in. There's just blaming and there's hatred and we're holding on to grudges and we're not going to be able to move forward forward without doing away with... Yeah, which is like you said, the spiritual element. Mm-hmm. We it's not just in the natural. Like we have to uh, so understand not. how important it is for us to humble ourselves and like submit to the Lord and say, okay, what does the Word say about this? What is because nothing's left out. Like nothing's this covers right, everything, which That's I'm right. excited yes. about. Yes, thank God. But yeah, I think yes. just understanding or remembering that we've all had different experiences and that shapes how we see the world. So. Yes. so so if I asked you, give me one thing, one or two things that some something practical that somebody could do coming from uh, your world. Oh, okay. More diverse. What can mm-hmm. we do to, to help the goal that we're fighting for? And that is unity. Um, hmm. I think maybe reaching out to those people who aren't like you. Like, I I know the people that kind of grew up like me, so, mm-hmm. but I'm also aware of those who didn't. <laughs> so I think maybe being intentional of, of connecting those two worlds. Um, and even I think the reason our church is diverse is because it was kind of just an overflow of our friend group. Like mm-hmm. it started with our yeah. college friends and we had both, you know, black white, Hispanic, Italian, like we had a a diverse group of friends. And Mm -hmm. so I think if you aren't around people that look different from you, like try to get out of your box. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're in a place where you have that freedom to do that, I think it does take being intentional. When you didn't grow up like me, like I didn't have to be intentional. I just feel like it was just natural kind of my surroundings. Mm -hmm. But if you're an adult and you realize, man, my whole world is black or my whole world is white or I don't know anybody that's not, that doesn't look like me, I think you have to try to think of practical ways, just like we as Christians have to do even getting outside of our Christian bubble. Like if I'm supposed to be winning winning souls, souls, I got to be around some worldly people, not in a way where I'm compromising my lifestyle and I'm going places I shouldn't go. But yeah, Yeah, like (laughs) even- I'm trying to win. No, no, no. I'm I'm out here winning. I'm here at this bar, you know, trying to win some souls. So yeah, I think you have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and guidance. But if that's what you, if that's your desire of like, I want to be a part of the solution, I think pray, ask the Holy Spirit, show me practical ways that I can like get around some different people and try to bring us together and maybe start having conversations. And Okay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All I right. think that's one thing. That's good. Pray and yeah, get out of your bubble. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Debbie, just where we are and yeah. what do you think we well, all can do? Listening to what Ash was saying about everybody pretty much is... Uh, 
you know, if it's an all black, it's because you, you know, your neighborhood, your school and all mm -hmm. that. But even in that, I venture to say and challenge that even in an all black school, there was a white teacher, there was, there was a Hispanic, or the, the liquor store owner was, mm -hmm. you know, Asian <laughs> <Liquor> or <store. laughs> also in the corner store market. Was, yeah, I don't mean, know nothing about corner the corner store. store. I'm just saying there was possibly in those, Somebody uh, in those yeah. uh, dynamics something, Somebody. someone, and yes, some type of true. other ethnicity. So in that, <laughs> case, you just have to tell a young person to uh, stay open, mm -hmm. you know, see new people and see them for the beauty that they are. They're different than you. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so be intrigued about good. that. So as uh, far as for me, you know, I homeschooled. And so they, you know, and we live in a, you know, uh, uh, it's a mixed, uh, diverse neighborhood. Uh, and we go to a diverse church. So my kids couldn't say that they had an all black experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when that George Floyd thing happened, mm -hmm. um, then Ooh. they felt lost. Mm. Like, wow. do I do yeah. I have the right to call my friend anymore, or should I be mad at my friend? <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right then and there was mm. a decision. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, mm. no, 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 no. You know. And so we had to catch that and say, no. See, the reality is, is it's a sin problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as good. children of God, we are called to love everybody because God that's has called good. us. You know, He loved us, and that's you know, yeah. his, his His Word says they will know us that we're His disciples, we're followers of Christ yes. by the love we have one another. So this love and this friendship that you have with someone that is not looking like you, and now you have this whole world mm -hmm. epic, you know, pandemic right. and epidemic epidemic that happened, or this death that happened during that time makes them feel like, okay, I don't have friends or I should be mad at them. No, you should love them. Yeah. Mm. You should ask them, hey, if there's anything you want to ask me, feel free. Yeah. You know, and stay open. That's good. Mm -hmm. Because That's really it's good. up to you to change the narrative. It's yeah. up to you to change the future if you remain in Christ and That's if you right. do it Christ-like. And before Nikki, Debbie, mm -hmm. what you just said is so crucial because they're the next generation. They're next. Yes. I can So yeah. if we want them to walk in love the, the and, call, the, and, the and call really of, experience mm -hmm. unity, we have to do it right. Yes. Absolutely. We, we got to get it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because it's not fair. It's not fair to pass on right. something that and is that not was important. according I could not to allow the scripture. Them. Right. That's you had right. a choice I to make. Had. Because you could have planted hate yes. and division. Yeah. That's right. Or you could have yeah. planted... Love. That's right. Because right. they haven't seen all that we've seen. Exactly. exactly. And so I, exactly. I had a decision mm -hmm. right exactly. then. But they are the future. So I had to and, give and them. And you had to do a lot more educating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With them. Yep. You but know, it's education. Then we had too. to take them back to the word. That's what because you although do. history, history right. had this unfold, mm -hmm. this is still true. Come on. This is the history. This is. <laughs> right. Thank oh, God. This somebody is brought this, this Bible. Bible. Right. We have to live by. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad it's somebody brought this Bible. It's Bible. This is big print. It's big enough for everyone. No, man. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Because Debbie has three. Three boys, uh, three, three black boys, black African boys. boys. African boys. So it was a, so it was it was a lot. Big. I mean, yeah, and yet even big. during that, you know, you have to still give them. Be careful when you go out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but stay open. Have a smile. Love yeah. who's ever in front of you. It's a you know it's only something. in Christ. It's only in Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. listen. Back to the <laughs> yeah, so, that's good. Just, okay, yeah. okay, Nikki. So so help us yeah. on on both sides. Those mm -hmm. who like Debbie said. Her kids grew up with the diversity, mm -hmm. but then you have people who don't. Yeah. So give me the wisdom for both, um, sides. both, yeah. both sides, practical things. So it's important to remember that, that nobody trips and falls into healthy diversity. <laughs> like you just don't, yeah. you're not walking so, around one day and just, oh, well, look, our church is diverse. Yeah, you yeah. know, or look, my life is diverse. Like yeah. that doesn't happen that way. Okay. Whether <laughs> you did it, at, you know, whether you're, you find yourself mm -hmm. in an environment where it's diverse, like, you know, that was a reflection of some decisions that your parents made, yeah. right? And then you all had to make some decisions. You all had to make yeah. some decisions about your church, right? Mm -hmm. At some point, there was a decision that was made mm -hmm. that said, I want this, not that. This is the life we want, not that anymore. And for many of us, particularly in Christian environments, I actually think the first thing we need to do is to make a decision. Mm. Make a decision mm. that you want a life that is full of as many different kinds of people as possible. That's awesome. Right? You have That's to decide awesome. it. You have to make a decision to okay. do it. Mm -hmm. Right? And then after that, 
uh, once you say yes, or if the answer is no, <laughs> You got to keep it real. Yeah. You got to keep it honest with yourself. If the answer is no, then the next question is why? why? Yeah. And then that's where if you're honest with yourself, you have enough courage to be mm -hmm. honest with yourself, mm -hmm. then you go back to Scripture and back to God mm -hmm. and ask Him to reveal to you what that is. Mm -hmm. Because that is must be rooted out yeah. if you say that you follow Jesus. Jesus. So yeah. that's the first thing. The second thing is, and this is for us as individuals or pastors, leaders, business owners, wherever we are, a great question to ask is who is missing? Mm -hmm. Who is missing? And this is in every stage of diversity. You know, even at a church, mm -hmm. you have lots of different, different nations. I've seen this happen before where a, a diverse church says, we did it, and you just stop. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, look, it's so diverse right. around here. Yeah. We're better than Next that Next thing church. you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the most assertive culture in that diverse church will always win out. Exactly. Ooh. If that if you're that's true. not intentionally cultivated oh, like you all amazing. are doing, right? Wow. So you have to keep cultivating. When you ask who is missing, it works in every season of life and ministry. And even as an individual, I remember for me, I said, who's missing in my life? Well, I knew that I, who was missing in my life was an older Indian woman. I don't know. I just kind of said, I don't have yeah. any older Indian women <laughs> yeah, in my life. Like, Where did you get that? And so I don't know. It's just kind of how I roll, you know. I and so I said, it. okay, well, how great. might that happen? Yeah. And so the first thing I thought was, it's time to get a new primary care physician. <laughs> wow. Now, here's what I didn't do. Let me go read six books about Indian culture. Right. You know, right. let me go, exactly. you know, follow some woman around that I met at the local market. Mm -hmm. You know, it was literally, what's the most, the, my coach calls it the smallest viable step that I could take. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was, I'm going to go find a new doctor. A new doctor. And I'm going to go see if I can find an older Indian woman, and I did, wow. right? And that seemed like an easy way mm -hmm. for me to have an on-ramp for somebody to come into my life that was missing. Mm -hmm. And for many people, that is literally where you need to start. Mm -hmm. If you're an individual and you don't have a diverse up bringing. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're black American and most of your people are around you are black American. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to go to where non-black people are. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know it could be scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you carry narratives around. Yeah. I know. Right. And hmm. do it anyway. Yeah, because we can do hard things. That's right. Good. Right? right? We can. Mm -hmm. And so go Get your groceries at a different place. Mm -hmm. Go get your morning coffee somewhere else once a week. Mm -hmm. Go where people are. Mm -hmm. Because that, we can do that. No, none of us needs a new job or more right. budget or right. like staff person. Right. You don't need any of that, right? <laughs> yeah. Just That's go good. where the Just people are. Through. If you're white American wow. and you're like, I don't know any people, you need to go where people are. Yeah. Where do you get your hair cut? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a man, go to a, go to a black barber shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you're scared. <laughs> no. And trust me, you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. But you have to yeah. go. Yes. You have to and go. those are the things that we can, that we can do. do. Yes. Yeah. Every single one oh, of us man. individually. And if we are church leaders and we ask who's missing, mm -hmm. and you might look at your church and say, well, my church is all Vietnamese, or my church is all Korean, or my church is all black, or my church is all white. Well, I guarantee you there's somebody that is of a different ethnicity in it's your there. town right. that, that you see. can go and start to build a relationship with mm -hmm. and right. start to do start some things to do some together. together. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have That's to so reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Uh, right. If you're a white church and there's a black church it's around the corner, like, uh, right. go build some relationship. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm saying that hopefully to make all you laugh because no, I want to demystify all of exactly. this. Exactly. That's right. what it is. I think it's we make it harder than what diversity. it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. like, ah, no, really, it's go find a new doctor. You know, yeah. Go shop somewhere new. That's good. Mm -hmm. Those are the things Very we can do. Practical. That's awesome. Yep, you you so said good. something about your relationship because your husband, you married to a white man. Yes. And you said that the only time you... Oh, yeah. What, sure. Yeah, we, uh, we realized this uh, a year or so ago that the, the only place that I am colorblind, and I do not reckon, recommend colorblindness. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> the only way right. where I am is in my home. 
mm-hmm. because I'm with David, my husband, day in and day out. I almost never think of him as my white husband, David. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Unless we're having a conversation about mm-hmm. it. However, what we found in that is we have to be really aware of that too. Hmm. Because yeah. I know for me, we could get really comfortable Mm-hmm. Okay. in just us. Right. Okay. And so, you know, uh, earlier I was sharing with you guys, you know, when so when my husband bought a book called White Fragility, I was like, what you need that for? <laughs> you married to me, you know? <laughs> right? But he's got his own experience as a white American person. Mm-hmm. When I'm processing the events that happened, right. you know, in summer yeah. of 2020, right? With right. what's going on. I can process that as a black American person, and it doesn't matter how much I love him, right. he will never, ever understand what it's right. like. Exactly. And so that, that's something we found out, mm-hmm. but I think it also was an invitation for us for more awareness, like yeah. the next level of mm-hmm. awareness mm-hmm. even. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, good stuff, yeah. good stuff. All right, Pastor James. Oh, so many. All so of you much, have so, so many I uh, great things. Uh, <laughs> I just began to think of some simple things that we could take away. For example, uh, speak the truth in love. The reality is our world has been polarized with ethnic discrimination that has cost people their lives and their livelihoods. Mm. And, it, and it's devastating. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she mentioned, when she mentioned our three boys, it was the most emotional moment I've had mm. today because I, for a moment, forgot we were, you know, laughing and talking about stuff. But the reality is I live in a world where it troubles me deeply mm. that yes. I don't know mm-hmm. yes. what could happen in their life. That's right. But it also it motivates me deeply mm. to be a part of the change that Christ gave me Absolutely. the power Mm-hmm. to bring in this world, yes. to make sure that my, my children are safe. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the greatest powers is the church. Mm-hmm. I know that sometimes we want to get this, you know, way bigger solution. Mm-hmm. It's the church. And, and, and this is the simplicity of, continue, like Acts 2 says, continuing in the apostles' doctrine, you know, uh, breaking the bread, fellowship, prayer, it's what we do together in relationship mm-hmm. that really solves a lot of the human problems that we have that are going on right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we always say God is love and love is God. It's a scriptural truth. Mm-hmm. But we're supposed to demonstrate that love yeah. to one another. And so speaking the truth in love, and then I say put love on display. Mm-hmm. Love that you are uh, ethnically diverse marriage. I, in my church, that's celebrated and, it's, and, and you are ethnic, like, it's like, you know, yeah, wow. That's yeah. awesome. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And I love that you could be celebrating it. But mm-hmm. put your love for other people on display. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm doing in the Unite Prayer Walks in yeah. our city. I'm going to New York this week yes. uh, this to, to do a walk. It's to show all of these ethnicities, not just worshiping together, but living together, yes. walking together. It displays the gospel and it yeah. solves mm-hmm. a lot of problems when you find something, someone you can reach mm-hmm. with the truth, but then live out the truth with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's never, it's, it's, it's never over. That's my encouragement. And I, I was telling Cece when I watched their family birth in Nashville life, mm-hmm. that's how it was. They spoke the truth in love, but they lived out that truth together in discipleship mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. And that displayed what the church is all about. Mm. And, and you said something else about the Spirit. The spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of the Spirit. In the, when the first church was birthed, as they were all in one place on one accord, the sound came from heaven, it was filled, filled the place where they were sitting, they all began to speak with new tongues. And then there were people from the diaspora of Jews from all over the world who were coming to Jerusalem who began to hear in their own language mm-hmm. what the Spirit was saying. And that was a gospel message to them that Peter began to interpret and preach. And now people from all over got saved and they began to live in Christian community together. It hadn't changed. Mm. It's a spirit-led believer preaching the gospel brings unity uh, in the body and to the world. We are the hope of the world. Start believing it. Start being filled with the spirit again. Start praying and reaching out again. Come on, pray us out. Praise Father, I just pray right yes, now for all Lord. those listening. First, Lord, I want to mm. say that I know that there are real hurts, 
Mm-hmm. And there are real pain, mm-hmm. there's real confusion and real mm-hmm. separation yes. in the world yes. that was caused by, by sin and mm-hmm. people and iniquity. Mm-hmm. God, there is no solution other than you. Mm-hmm. Would you, by your spirit, send helpers, your disciples, disciple makers, to bring healing to those situations? Yes, Would you Lord. give us that are looking right now mm-hmm. a sense of a, yes, of a fresh burden to be full representations of Christ's followers, yes. to be true ambassadors for Christ and ministers of reconciliation mm-hmm. with a word of reconciliation. Yes, May we be powerfully filled with the Spirit that yes, we can Lord. get the results of the first century church mm-hmm. that yes. thousands yes, in a God. moment were turned we'll around. See. We yeah. still believe in for our cities. Yes, we God. still believe in for our nation. Mm-hmm. And we want to say this to racism. We bind you. We, we rebuke you. You, yes. you have no yes. power no here power. with us. And your Hallelujah. season of reign is over. Oh, Christ's God. reign is here on earth yes, and in heaven. Yes, and I pray this in agreement with these believers. In yes, Jesus' in Jesus mighty name. name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Well, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Generations. We will see you next time. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Oh, and get out and meet somebody who doesn't look like yes. you. Yes. Bye. <laughs> I love you. Bye. 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 Awesome.